Hello, I'm P3, responsible for analyzing and improving the uh, performance of the in vehicle uh, infotainment platform at Hyundai Motor Company. Uh, today, I would like to introduce various uh, uh, performance analysis features and automatic performance monitoring capabilities using an open source program called Guider. Uh, first, let's briefly discuss performance issues and then I will introduce uh, performance analyzer, Guider. Next, I'll showcase features that enable automatic performance monitoring and uh, generation of analysis reports when uh, performance issues arise. Finally, I'll share what performance data generated by Guider and how uh, I have been utilizing such large volumes of data to analyze and uh, improve performance of mass production in uh, real world. Uh, as we develop our product, we encounter various performance issues. Uh, if there is something perceptible, it would be things like slowness, instability, and stuttering. And analyzing performance issues at the level of single app is not usually too challenging because as uh, most platforms provide good debugging and analysis features for apps, However, when the scope of the problem extends to the service or platform level, uh, such as kernel, analyzing and improving it uh, becomes much more difficult. The reason is that the areas to examine broaden, uh, the amount of study requires increases, and the analysis programs to be used also multiply. Uh, in the case of the uh, infotainment system developed by our team, Various apps and services within their system are interconnected to uh, implement complex and sophisticated specs. Considering features that interact with external systems like cluster and head-up display and ADAS and others, the system becomes extremely complex. Performance issues arising from such complex systems are truly diverse and often challenging to analyze. To quickly analyze issues and uh, pinpoint their causes in such complex systems, the best approach is swiftly select and adaptively use the optimal tools. So what performance analysis tools should be used effectively? Uh, analysis tools can be uh, broadly categorized into three types, uh, monitoring programs and profiling programs and uh, tracing programs. As performance analysis tools are diverse for each time uh, system area, users need to choose them wisely according to their specific objectives. However, when actual performance issues arise, knowing where to start and which tools to use first uh, can be quite challenging without prior experience. So having worked in performance analysis for uh, 10 years, I have come to analyze, realize that uh, Many of these tasks are inconvenient and insufficient or even uh, impossible with tools available. Uh, over time, I found myself in situations where I had to analyze systems without access to the uh, source code and compiler, relying rel uh, only on uh, root share. In light of these challenges, I decided that I, uh, it would be more practical to create my own tool leading to uh, development of an open source program called Guider. Uh, Guider, as mentioned earlier, uh, provides visualization, visualization features along with monitoring, profiling, and tracing functions. Uh, all these features operate immediately on their target with the need for source code or compiler. Developed for uh, comprehensive uh, performance analysis, Guider currently comprises around 153 commands and various options, and the details of which will be uh, explained later. It utilizes GPL version 2 with the official repository hosted on GitHub, and supporting also PIP and Open Embedded. Guider can be executed with a basic Python without the need for separate build, install, or uh, environment setup. It supports popular CPU architectures and requires about two megabytes of storage size. And during system monitoring, CPU resources are consumed about two or three percent of one core, and RAM usage is uh, around uh, 70 megabytes. 
Guider operates as on standalone on all Linux-based platforms and Android and partially on macOS and Windows. Uh, let's start a uh, demo video for installation. Uh, actually, if you want to uh, execute it without installation, you can execute guider.py file directly. So let's try installing it using PIP. Uh, it's too uh, small font, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's done. Guider currently incorporates approximately uh, 153 built-in commands. It's implemented directly without relying on external execution binaries, ensuring uh, independence from dependencies. In addition to monitoring, profiling, tracing, and visualization features you see in the diagram, Guider also supports more functions, uh, experimental uh, analysis features that is capabilities to control system and task, uh, communication features in server client structure for remote control, and system load testing and various utility features are included. Due to time constraints, I will provide a brief overview of the most commonly used ones. Uh, let's start the demo video for guide features. Uh, first, let's explore the help and examples. Uh, Guider has about 103. 153 commands supporting various operating systems. So you can check the help for each command by running it with H option, like this. At the top of the command help, you will find description, options, and examples of the uh, respective command. And uh, before analysis, let's create a workload. Uh, Guider supports the creation of a CPU workload with the CPU test command. Uh, this command creates a task called guider worker that uses 100% of one CPU core. Uh, similarly, you can uh, allocate the, uh, and monitor system memory every second with the mem test command. And there is also IO test command for reading or writing from two uh, specific files repeatedly and measuring elapsed time. So then, next step, let's check how much CPU the workload task is using with the top command. Yeah, this shows that the guider worker task is using around 100% of one uh, CPU core. And you can use filter options to focus on specific tasks with G option. this and you can also save this information to a file with O option. It's like uh, profiling mode. Then uh, visualize the profiling results with the draw command. Uh, then finally the SVG file is created and then let's open it with Chrome browser. Yeah, this way you can create resource usage graphs and detailed information about processes using a lot of memory or I.O. Okay, let's uh, check information about files or sockets opened by tasks with the app top command. With filter options, it shows the number of types of file descriptors of all tasks. Applying a filter we can use G option with uh, target task name or ID. Then it will show details about file descriptors and sockets, including positions, open options, protocols, and others. Now uh, let's move on to function monitoring commands. To monitor in real time which functions or a particular task is taking a long time to complete, we can use UTAP command. Uh, before then, let's create a workload in background first. Then let's start monitoring the functions of task dynamically with UTAP command. 
Yeah, this shows functions that are waiting or taking a long time to execute in real time. You can save this information uh, to a file with O option. Yeah, then convert the monitoring result into a frame graph file with draw frame command. Yeah, you can visualize profiling result in a frame graph. Okay, opening it. Yeah, clicking on specific functions provides an extended view of the related course text. Then you can search for specific functions using Control F with regular expressions then it will be highlighted with red colors. Yeah, like this. Then next, let's monitor system calls for specific tasks in real time. Uh, first, create a workload and background again. And start monitoring the system calls of the task with the sysstop command. Yeah, this shows real-time system calls being invoked with backtraces. Saving and converting the result into a frame graph file is also supported as before. And similarly, let's uh, monitor Python functions. Uh, first, run the IOTA program that is written in Python and very famous to uh, monitor system IO. And next, start monitoring the Python functions of the task using pytop command. Yeah. Saving and converting the result into a frame graph file is also possible as before. Then let's uh, explore profiling commands at the system level. First, profile the actions of thread with the rec command in background and create a workload for a short time. Then uh, start profiling and convert the profiling, profiling data into a, a report file. Yeah, then let's open the output file. This report file summarizes resource usage for system and task. It, sh it also shows scheduling latency, and scheduler level states, block operation size and count, and histograms. And detailed information on block operation patterns, such like sequential or random access, and file operations of a file path and access size also possible. And now let's visualize the scheduling information of tasks based on profiling data with a timeline. Uh, next, we can use the draw command to create a SVG file again and open it with Chrome browser. And then you can view task scheduling on each core. Like this, and mouse over each bar to see task names and scheduling related information. The block color at the top of each bar indicates blocking state, and red indicates preemption state. And next, let's profile all system calls invoked in this system. Uh, start profiling with the syslec command in background, and generate a workload for a short time. and stop profiling and create a report file with the report command. Yep. Open the generated report file to see states about all invoked system calls, including type and duration and call count 
and error count and time statistics. You can also check the similar states about each task. And now let's move on to tracing command. First one is system call tracing with the uh, strace command. It's very similar to Linux strace, but it can convert it to a SVG file to visualize also. And let's create, uh, let's trace user level native functions with the btrace command. If there are too many functions called, you can apply function filter with C option. And bitrace command supports additional subcommands for handling when a specific function called. So, uh, yeah, this is this is the list of subcommands for function call handling. Yeah, there are many subcommands. So, when the target function is called, you can read or manipulate values of specific register or memory and introduce delays, repeatedly call, or redirect to other function. For example, to read the data to be uh, written during a write operation, you can uh, use it like this. So you can read all buffer data from target's task's memory like this. And similarly, let's uh, trace Python functions of IOTA process executed before with a py trace command. Yeah, for this task. And now let's move on to signal tracing command. And first create a test program source code. It will use out of bounds array index. And if you run the following uh, tracing command, yeah, the process received C Gobert due to uh, stack smashing detection and it used out of bounds array index. And finally, let's explore a memory leak tracing command. First, create an example program. It will allocate about 100 megabyte memory and keep them. And run leak trace command with it. It will also uh, run with running task. And the guider.out file contains a table of uh, displaying call stacks, allocation size, and count of unreleased memories of functions. And it will be converted like this, frame graph. Yeah, there are too many features. And unlike servers, embedded systems with significant resource constraints always need to uh, archive maximum performance with minimal uh, resources. To archive this, uh, strict validation, analysis, and optimization of performance must be conducted over a considerable period. However, the modern SDB uh, development process in automotive area requires greater flexibility and the development of more features within shorter cycles. Uh, as new features with complex interdependencies are uh, continuously added and fixed test cases alone cannot cover all uh, user scenarios. So furthermore, previous guider commands could only be used in person when their state persisted or was reproducible after an issue occurred. Therefore, there is a need for capability to monitor vehicles from the development stage onwards and automatically analyze and report performance issues when they occur. So I updated Guider to be the uh, automated performance monitoring daemon. So Guider daemon automatically monitors the performance of systems and generates performance reports based on the collected data in case of any issues. All of these operations are performed automatically based on various threshold values defined in a file beforehand. The automatic performance monitoring function is executed by Guider as follows. 
initially guide or load the configuration file to understand the monitoring targets and conditions such like threshold, and then it begins monitoring. When an issue occurs, guide automatically executes the corresponding command list sequentially. The command list may involve directly handling the problem and collecting data for problem analysis or sending notifications to external systems. If there is a command in the list that generates a performance report, and Guider creates a performance report as a file in the storage. This continuous performance monitoring function must require minimum system resources. First, the objects that can be monitored include a wide range of items, from the physical device of the system to logical resources and various logos, diverse types of functions, uh, and even IPC, everything can be automatically monitored. Not limited to the system level, monitoring at the task level and function level is also possible, but it's a little bit burden. Uh, to effectively utilize this uh, capability, careful preparation of monitoring setting, conditions, and strategies is crucial. Actually, each monitoring item is detailed with these monitoring values. They all include the system, uh, task, function, and message. Next is the uh, most crucial part of the automatic, automatic monitoring. It's setting condition in configuration file. Uh, during initialization, Guider wrote the configuration file to understand the monitoring targets, scope, and conditions. When uh, the conditions are met during monitoring, registered commands are automatically executed sequentially. The term command in Guider can refer to embedded commands supported within Guider or uh, external commands that can be executed in the shell. Users have a, a, a freedom to define them as they wish. The left side of the screen represents the file format defining these events. Uh, the right side shows corresponding example values. So in the next level, um, you specify the scope. Uh, if it's for the entire system, it should be entered as system. Uh, if it's for the uh, specific task, its task's name or uh, ID can be entered. And in the subsequent level, you define event conditions and uh, processing method. This includes the applicability of the condition and threshold values and continuous conditions and a list of commands to be automatically executed when the event occurs. The most crucial aspects here are the threshold and the list of commands. When the conditions meet the threshold, the commands from the list are automatically executed sequentially. Uh, summarizing the uh, example on the right, it means monitoring CPU usage at the system level if the total CPU usage remains above 95% for five seconds, automatically execute the following two commands. Uh, the commands may be built-in guider commands, starting with save, that uh, generate performance reports based on collected data or external shell commands executable. I will explain more uh, about the contents of performance report later. And now let me explain the uh, automatically generated report files at the time of the uh, problem occurrence. Guider continuously collects system performance data from the start of monitoring and storing it in fixed and uh, limited size internal ring buffer. When the save command is executed upon uh, encountering an issue, Guider generates a performance report file. The performance report file summarizes uh, system state for a specific duration around the time of the issue. It includes various details, but I will uh, specifically mention about the most crucial summary information and snapshot details. Uh, firstly, the top summary input table provides a line-by-line -line summary of collected system information. It includes CPU, memory, I.O. network, and system events information gathered at the regular intervals. Below that, uh, where the tables uh, summarizing the resource usage changes in, for tasks in the each resource unit, the usage of resources for tasks is displayed uh, over time on the right. 
in addition to this CPU usage table named top CPU info, there are also uh, summary tables for delay, SCAT priority, uh, GPU, VSS, and RSS, and block storage network and C group. The previous summary information is extremely useful for analyzing changes in resource usage for either the system or task at a glance. However, since it is uh, uh, summarized information, it can be challenging to examine detailed information at a uh, specific points in a time. In such cases, by reviewing the snapshot information included in the report file, you can access more specific system details. The system status is displayed in the format of the top command output. Uh, at the top, uh, total amount of system events and physical resources are shown. Below that, information such as uh, system latency and resource uses and the number of uh, events are displayed. Of course, usage information for supported GPUs is also available for such like NVIDIA and Qualcomm's product. In the last section, uh, resource usage and uh, event information for each task are displayed. At the very bottom, uh, special task information, including new, terminated, and abnormal tasks is available to be presented. Uh, based on experience, limiting the uh, monitoring buffer size of GUIDER to 3 megabytes and generating a report file results in approximately uh, 15 minutes of system information being captured. In reality, uh, analyzing such a large amount of text manually is almost impossible due to the extensive numbers that are not easily accommodated on a single screen. So in such cases, the report file needs to be visualized as shown on the screen. Guido allows you to uh, convert text-based report files to visualized SVG files and when opened it in a browser, it produces an image that uh, provides a comprehensive view of the entire period. At the top, you can see CPU and GPU usage at system or task levels. Below that, I.O. and memory reclaimed related statistics for storage, network, and uh, more are displayed. At the very bottom, the system's memory usage is shown. And of course, uh, the layout of content displayed for each area can be modified in various ways using options. You can also display changes in memory and IOUCs and uh, more at the task level. If it's difficult to analyze each graph separately uh, because they overlap, it's also possible to analyze them by converting them into a stacked graph like the uh, box figure uh, in the middle, middle right. Additionally, it's possible to visualize the report file along with the system log. When using the uh, conversion command, you can input the log file path and define log information for, uh, as events with the additional options. Uh, then the output file will display the occurrence time and content of system log at the top of the screen. Maybe it will be very useful. When uh, exceeding a uh, certain threshold for CPU or memory usage of specific tasks, it's also possible to automatically profile the core stack using uh, the resources of that tasks as illustrated the uh, diagram. If the text-based report is too large for uh, easy analysis, it's also possible to convert it into a frame graph as shown in the bottom right. Uh, even for issues that are really difficult to reproduce, it's uh, possible to perform automatic function level analysis without the need for rebuilding to add logs or enable specific debugging features. And Guider operates as a monitoring daemon in the background, so there is a need to uh, control it externally for various purposes. To facilitate this, uh, the following command, control commands are provided for use in the shell. These commands enable you to change uh, setting or control the operation of guider during runtime without need for restarting. Moreover, since the system is being monitored continuously, it's, impossible, it's possible to uh, generate report files with past data 
at any time as needed. Okay, the performance information, including the performance reports collected uh, through the previous automatic monitoring, is specific to a single device and exists only within, a, within the device. To effectively analyze and utilize performance data for, uh, for a large number of devices, it needs to be collected on the remote central server. Now, let me talk about this in more detail. In real-time performance data generated by Guider can be continuously updated in a separate JSON file. At the bottom of left, uh, you can see the output example of the previously viewed top command. In addition to all the data shown here, uh, various other data that couldn't fit on one screen will uh, also be recorded or within this JSON file. Here is examples of some of the information. So in this format, details at the system and task level for each resource, resource unit are represented. At the top left, you will find the threshold events that is a display or, or performance issues called events that occur the single boot, since booting and among with its count. At the top right, you will find the peak figures for maximum or uh, minimum values of each resource and event. We can transfer this data to our analysis machines for analyzing the performance of driving devices. As potential data candidates to uh, collect on remote machine, we have a list of performance issues, peak resource uses, and performance reports. As demonstrated earlier with uh, performance report data alone, not only can we obtain specific snapshots of the moment when an issue occurs, but we can also visualize extended periods before and after the problem arises. Uh, that's quite specific information, but it only represents the movement of a single device. Additionally, we can use BioLink Lab to visualize peak resource uses data collected on, in a large quantities. This enables us to categorize and observe trends in uh, resource uses and events among many devices. While the uh, BioLink Lab is great for showing a lot of information at once, it gets harder to use as uh, there is more data to handle especially for uh, the purpose of comparing data by distinguishing them into categories such as platform and device type and version and others, it becomes even more challenging to use. As the data volume increases, histograms become more useful, especially when trying to uh, compare data in uh, small interval units. And as shown in the example of the graph, when comparing peak data collected earlier within specific uh, date ranges, similarities and differences become clearly evident. Additionally, uh, even data at low, uh, very low, but uh, potentially dangerous levels are well represented and allowing for the uh, identification of potentially overlooked areas. And you are not limited to uh, time-based comparisons you can also analyze by platform and device type and versions. So if, uh, if we conduct comparative analysis by distinguishing data based on versions, we can uh, monitor resource changes after uh, deploying new versions, track corner cases in the operation of complex specs and uh, identify abnormal system behavior. By linking this histogram analysis to previous performance report data, it becomes possible to conduct uh, detailed analysis of specific situations, making it quite useful. In this example, based on uh, data collected on the same date, we conducted a uh, uh, comparative analysis of peak CPU and memory uses among various uh, device types. Even when using the same platform, uh, uh, variant code and specialized software, along with diverse use patterns, uh, can create significant differences. Of course, it's essential to um, uh, employ techniques to filter out noise data, uh, which may 
uh, include data from uh, test cases. Data. And up to this point, we have the, uh, discussed analytical method for analyzing the extensive peak data collected to detect the status, changes, and uh, anomalies of devices. Uh, in this chapter, I aim to explain method for analyzing anomalies using large volumes of uh, performance reported data. Performance report data is automatically generated when uh, predefined threshold conditions are met, providing valuable data encompassing detailed system operations over a specific period. However, since this data describes only one device, it can be challenging to process and utilize as a bulk data set. So before uh, applying complex AI techniques, so I tried first to create statistics based on the set of tasks performed at the time of report generation. The top left task set represents the uh, seven tasks that consumed the most CPU uh, according to a performance report. Below that are uh, another seven tasks with the highest CPU usage from a different performance report. By sorting the names of these top seven tasks in ascending order to create uh, task group names and then calculating statistics for these task groups, a massive task group list like the one on the right side is generated. This list may ch uh, change the, a lot of depending on how many tasks are grouped, but it can show us interesting things like uh, which tasks makes the system work the hardest, which one uh, kick into gear when the system is busy, and even tasks that seem unrelated, unrelated to system activity or uh, each other. If we look closely at the performance reports linked to this list, we can find out uh, more about how system behaves and spot any oddities we might have missed before. Yeah, so far I have explained some kind of useful features of Guider. And there are uh, more useful features besides the ones I described, but I couldn't explain all of them because of time limitation. And I introduced the performance monitoring demo feature. It will uh, be more expanding to manage and analyze performance issues itself. And furthermore, I shared the method for comparative uh, analysis across various aspects such as uh, platform, and device type, and version and time using the collected massive data set. In future, I plan to integrate the system logs to enable more uh, specific and automated analysis. Additionally, I plan to add fe uh, feature for core stack analysis of the massive data set using logs of the most uh, critical events, uh, such as process crash or kernel panic. So for uh, specific details, uh, please refer to uh, readme file in GitHub. And thank you for your listening long time. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Can we have questions Yeah. Yeah, so for profiling, you normally you compile the code with profiler turn on, right? So how do you go about develop Skyler? Ah. Uh. Mm. For, yeah, for task profiling, guider. Yes, right. But it's. How much effort you put in? <laughs> put in? Time. A time. time. Uh, maybe nine years. For nine years. Yeah. And I implemented. <laughs> I implemented all them without any uh, system libraries, example, more, uh, Dwarf or some others, I implemented yeah, itself. So, <coughs> you have to compile the code with profilers. Are you familiar with sample-based profilers? Mm, yes, sample right. Profiler. Yes, right. Or uh, all core-based profiling using ptrace. Yeah, if I use ptrace, I can control uh, target task everything, yeah, stop or continue or manipulating register or yeah, memory. So I can, yeah, 
control everything. So we can get paid for free? Yes, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you. Pull it. Thank you. OK. <laughs> so I'm sorry for a uh, uh, late uh, presentation because this is lunch time. So <laughs> have a nice lunch.